Good afternoon, everybody. Pastor Rick here, Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for August 10th, 2022. Sorry about it being so late today. It's um, been kind of a crazy day, but I have an interesting uh, question for you today. What if? We're going to take a look at uh, Paul and the book of Acts and something that happened in Athens. And particularly, generally speaking, we're going to talk about uh, evangelism and, and uh, the process of it. So, from uh, Acts 17, starting in verse 19, Paul is in Athens and he's before the Oropagos, which is um, this large council of uh, poets and philosophers, theologians, um, all kinds of folks, sort of the thought center of the Western world, okay? So then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Oropagus, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. <clears throat> all the Athenians and the foreigners who live there spent their time doing nothing but talking about listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship. I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. And so here we go into kind of today's um, uh, specifics about evangelism. Uh, verse 32, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. But others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. So, here we go. Today, we are out and amongst lots of people with lots of thoughts and ideas, some of their own. Some they've heard, um, actors, politicians, athletes, uh, you name it. Uh, have thrown all kinds of ideas out there, authors uh, and certainly professors and you name it. There is nothing but ideas and theologies out there and every one of them is supposed to be the new greatest thing. Just like the people in Athens sitting around talking about the latest and greatest ideas. Finally, this is going to be the thing that makes a difference, right? This is going to be the thing that we need to move forward and this is going to make life better. Do it this way. Do it this way. Whatever. Uh, the people of Athens were so confused they even had um, to an unknown God. You know, So they're going to worship, as Paul points out, something they didn't even know or understand. Uh, all in searching for God. And uh, I would argue with you today, or maybe not argue, perhaps submit to you today, that everybody is looking for God. They just don't know that they're looking for the God of the universe. They're trying to find a God that makes their life sense of their life. Um, they're looking for a God that makes them feel good, where they can hang their hat on some sort of ideology that uh, appears to be correct to them. Uh, so everybody's looking for God. They just don't know which God to look for. And so it's our job then to come in, as Paul did, and point out the truth of the God of truth and the universe and everything in it. We have to do this 
rather bravely. And we have to do it with commonality and with love and understanding. Uh, my question to you, what if, what if it made a difference to you um, that no matter what happened, because some of these people continue to ask Paul questions, some of them sneered in laughter, like they were dismissive of Paul himself and what he was saying. And then others believed. So Paul didn't know that when he walked into the Oropagus. He didn't know that anybody was going to believe what he had to say or that he would even be accepted um, to speak there at all. So my what if question is to you, what if that made a difference? What if just the ones that would either become inquisitive or the ones that would actually believe and follow made the difference to you, the difference enough for you to take up your evangelism cross and run with it? Because we're often shied away from evangelism. We don't know if we're going to be accepted. We definitely don't want to be rejected. Nobody wants to be laughed at. And then, of course, there's some tales and acts and other places where Paul went through some rather horrific experiences. And, of course, we don't look forward to that. But Paul stood before uh, the seed of knowledge of the entirety of the Western world and proclaimed about 260 words rel relative to God and the truth of God. And he was able to garner some who believed. That's where we need to focus our efforts. That's what needs to make the difference. That's what needs to drive you to evangelism is, hey, some of these folks are going to become curious and want to ask more questions, and I'm glad I'm the one that they can turn to. Some of these folks are going to believe right off what I have to say and want to follow, and I'm glad I'm being used by God to deliver those words. So whichever it is, that's where we need to find our motivation. Um, as Paul would go on later in uh, 1 Thessalonians to tell the church at Thessalonica, they were his glory. They were his pride. They were actually his crown that he would wear before God when he returned with, uh, when Jesus returned with his holy ones. And so uh, he held up that church um, as his crown. We need to hold up the groups that we talk to as our crown. Uh, there are going to be scoffers and there is going to be rejection and there is going to be laughing and but there is going to be curiosity and acceptance as well. So my message to you today about what if, decide in your heart, decide today, what if you made that the difference? What if you camped out there, the ones who would ask questions and the ones who would believe? And move forward from that place. Use that as your starting point and move forward with the gospel, move the kingdom forward in your life and the lives of others, not based on fear or intimidation of the scoffers and the rejection and the laughing and the speculation, but based on the curiosity of those who would want to hear more and the faith-filled lives of those who want to believe right away. That's where we live. So listen, brothers and sisters, uh, we don't have a choice about evangelism. You cannot deny Christ in your life and denying to, to share the gospel, denying to present the gospel, refusing to let God use you as a tool of evangelism, as his plea, his words through you as his plea to the lost is a denial of Christ. And it's dangerous because it shows the world that you're not really any different than they are. And if you're not any different, then why would they possibly want to be a Christian? They wouldn't. There would be no reason to. So we can't let that happen. We were left with the ministry of reconciliation. It is up to us each who proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to take that message uh, as far as we can in our lives and proclaim it as boldly as we can and stand up in front of any crowd like Paul did and be the one who is the vessel for the words of God. The transforming power of the Holy Spirit can work through those words. 
So I pray that you take that cross up and you run with it because we really need it in these times. Lots of scoffers and laughers out there and they need to know the truth. I love you. I'll talk to you next time.